folks. Hey, folks. I was asked to actually start at 35 because that's when the slot <laughs> starts. But I don't want to keep you waiting, so we decided maybe I'll, I'll cut off and edit the video uh, later. Uh, mine is actually a very short lightning talk today. Um, uh, Luca was on stage earlier talking about uh, Packet Fest in Zurich. I don't want to make too much uh, advertisement for it, but you should come there if you like this type of thing. There will be a longer session talking about S-Flow and vector packet processing there too. In case you notice, there's uh, four talks back to back on uh, VPP uh, today. Uh, I'm uh, talk number uh, three of four. After me are two uh, gentlemen who also have excellent stuff to share. So I'm going to keep the boilerplate <laughs> VPP stuff to a minimum today. Uh, my name is uh, Pim. Uh, I uh, work at a small uh, company called IPNG Networks. I've been in the uh, RIPE community for a while. And uh, IPNG started in the pandemic because I was kind of uh, bored. And we work on uh, DPDK and uh, VPP applications. We run a ring in, in uh, Europe uh, that... Uh, is the number three, I think, best connected ISP in Switzerland, which I thought was always kind of funny because it's kind of a basement ISP. Um, I wanted to talk about S-Flow uh, today. It's an method for collecting traffic in switched and routed networks. It uses statistical sampling, not flow probing for the entire flow. Originally, RFC 3170 then superseded, now currently uh, a uh, version 5 on the sflow.org uh, website. What it kind of does is it uses data plane, typically ASICs, right, to copy forward one in n packets, where n is a large number, like 1,000 or 10,000 or a million. And it copies the first couple of bytes from those packets into a little buffer, uh, adds things like ingress and egress uh, interfaces, MAC addresses, sampling parameters, all that type of stuff. And if you uh, want, also extra metadata like which AS path, which AS number, what types of things do we know about this packet as we see it in transit, sampling it. Um, it also periodically reads interface counters like uh, how many multicast and unicast packets did we see, how many discards did we see, and so on. Um, and then it, it stuffs these all together sort of in datagrams, uh, mostly UDP datagrams, and forwards these batches of samples plus the stats, like the counters, into a central place uh, called a collector. Uh, and because a lot of this heavy lifting is done uh, by the ASIC to, to do the, the copying and so on, uh, it's easy to get tens of thousands, really, uh, of these agents in the field, like switches and routers, to talk to one or two central uh, um, collectors, right? That can then get a holistic view of where the network is at. So VPP, like we know, we talked about it a little bit. It's an open source data plane, uh, similar to Grout, uh, that provides super, super fast uh, uh, networking using uh, DPDK, RDMA, VertIO, VMXNet, if you're on VMware, uh, AVF, AF Packet, all sorts of inputs, really, uh, can easily do hundreds of millions, if not a billion packets per second. Uh, ask my buddy Vlad about that later. And we've seen on GCP as well, 100 gigabits is, is in the cards, like for a single VM. And it runs on commodity hardware. There's no binary blobs and things like that. So you can just download the packages from FIDO uh, and uh, install them on Debian or even Red Hat if you'd like. So the lineup today, like we talked about, uh, Feda and Mohammed talked uh, earlier about the GCP story, Nathan about uh, Maglev. I'm going to talk a little bit about S-Flow. And Varun and Vankata are going to talk about TLS uh, after me. Uh, so I just wanted to real quickly go back into that graph and talk about it a little bit. So a packet enters in VPP a directed acyclic graph, uh, starting from an input node, for example, DPDK, which we talked about before, or RDMA, or VertIO. These are all in gray. And then it goes on to layer two. All these packets go into these nodes, right? all the Ethernet packets uh, anyway. And then we sort what type of Ethernet packet is this. This is IPv4, IPv6, and hand it off to sort of uh, vertical stacks, if you will, of graph nodes for IPv4, IPv6, MPLS, ARP, that type of stuff. Uh, and then it ends, hopefully, like in an output node. Uh, typically, we've figured out what to do with the packet. We're going to route it to this other destination. So we'll, we'll bring it back to Ethernet output uh, and then select an interface, put a MAC address in the Ethernet frame, and forward the thing on its merry way, right? That would be an output node in green. But then we also have uh, drops. Actually, we had an interesting question about where did that 0 0.0004 you know, percent of drops come from. I would say do not underestimate the importance of monitoring drops in your network. Like me, people talk about what made it through all the time, but we typically don't really know what happened when the packet died. Uh, was it because of an ACL? Was it because of uh, in input congestion, like whatever we got descheduled for a microsecond on the kernel? 
Is it output congestion because there was no TX queue in the hardware that was willing to accept our packet? Like, we don't know. So it's actually really important to get visibility, and SFlow would be able to do that with a little asterisk. So what we've now done is we take that graph in the middle, and we try to insert a new node that takes all these packets, does something with them, and then typically moves them back to the next graph, right? So we insert this SFlow node into what we call the input arc. So that means every time a device had a set of packets that it was willing to give to VPP, we took them, and we looked at them, and we sampled maybe one in N, and then we moved them into ostensibly the next node, uh, which would be Ethernet input in the vast majority of cases. And we're planning to do this as well on the green path here, the output node, so we can do egress sampling. That's actually pretty straightforward. And a little bit more tricky, at least in VPP, is drop monitoring because there is no easy mechanism for us to insert this node into that part of the graph that drops packets. So I, I'd like to talk to the VPP uh, devs about that one a little bit. Uh, so then when you do this, that bubble that I had that I inserted into the graph is uh, called an SFlow worker node. And really what it does is it takes all the packets from the input and just moves them back to the output, which is kind of a little bit wasteful in a way. Uh, but one in N of these we can copy, uh, and what we do is we create a set of FIFOs that are lock-free uh, and multi-threaded and weight-free, and we just put the packet in there. Right? And if the uh, FIFO is full, we'll drop them. That's one way for us to make sure we don't overload the rest of the system. But typically there's enough space uh, in these first-in, first-out buffers for us in the worker to just add to the top of it, and then in the uh, bottom side we'll consume them somewhere else. So it's actually nice because this FIFO allows us to really just do what we do well in the data plane, which is shuffle packets around and make all the rest of the more complicated stuff someone else's problem. Uh, and after messing around with it a little bit, uh, Neil uh, McKee from Inmon, who did most of the implementation, got us down to nine CPU cycles for every packet we touch, uh, and about 17 cycles if we decide that we actually want to sample it, right? so grabbing all the extra information and putting it in the FIFO and, and so on. And just for reference, end-to-end, -end, uh, on at least this, uh, this machine that I was testing on, uh, layer 2 cross-connect, Ethernet in, Ethernet out, is about 144 CPU cycles. So we're adding 9.5 or 10 to that. It's, it's not trivial. Uh, but IPv4 is about 211, and MPLS is about 219 when we did a load test. So it's not that terrible to add 10 cycles, but obviously 10 cycles is 10 cycles, right, that you could otherwise spend on doing something else. Anyway, we put all this stuff in the FIFO and we move on so that the data plane workers can stay fast. And then every now and again we wake up this other thread in main uh, that says, hey, is there anything in these FIFOs that we should be aware of? And we just drain those FIFOs, right? And what it does, this main task, is it grabs these packet counters every now and again, every 10 seconds or so, and it grabs all of these uh, samples from the FIFOs and it puts them in a Linux kernel construct called a p-sample channel, which is a Netlink library, and it just gives them to the kernel. And then whoever would like to subscribe to those things can get them out the other side. So this is another handoff point, right? So main in VPP is grabbing all the stuff from the FIFOs and the counters, and every now and again emitting uh, p-sample messages into the kernel. So that's the arrow in dark gray at the bottom there. Then there's a third component to this architecture called the host SFlow daemon, which is already existing code that most everyone in the SFlow world will have come across. And it then subscribes to Netlink and gets all these packets back out, the samples and so on, puts them into a UDP packet, and sends them to those uh, collectors in the middle, right? So that's the, the multi-stage. The data plane stays super fast. The main thread just collates from the data plane, sends them to Netlink and then SFlowD will uh, copy them to your uh, collector. All right, so how do you configure this? I have this lab set up that I wanted to show. It's one machine called Hungry Hungry Hippo because it always likes packets, and then a T-Rex load tester from Cisco, both running on a rather old Dell R730. And then I have two loops. Uh, one at the top really is a layer two cross-connect that is SFlow enabled in VPP, so we're sampling here, but also in IPv4 and MPLS. That is enabled and sampling here. And then in green and red down below, the exact same thing, but without SFlow. So we can see what is the impact on performance. 
I'm not going to go over the entire config, but if you were to run this on your own machines, download VPP, run it in Docker, as we saw before, you could type these types of things and you would bring up that IPv4. Or MPLS, uh, giving a label in, uh, label number 16, pushing it out to this other interface with label 17 imposed. That would be an MPLS uh, P router in principle. Uh, or a layer two cross connect, which is really just Ethernet frames in, copy directly to the other interface out. It's the cheapest thing that we maybe could do. To turn on S flow, well, there's a couple of things that are defaults, and I put them here. The sampling rate would be one in 10,000 packets. The pulling interval is, I think, 20 seconds by default, but I said pull the interface stats every five seconds, and then copy 128 bytes from each of the Ethernet frames you do sample into the P sample, and turn it on on these four interfaces up top there, right? And that means the four interfaces down below have SFlow disabled. And then host SFlow D is pretty simple. There's a collector where we're sending our samples to, and then we subscribe to P sample group equals one, and we enable the VPP module, which is in the HSFlowD, which knows how to sort of take that stuff from P sample. We restart HSFlowD, and pretty immediately we see all these samples coming in. Uh, and if we want to grep for the counters, we also see the counters every now and again come by. Some operators notes if you were to start using this stuff. Uh, VPP often has a data plane network namespace where it puts its interfaces uh, and collectors can be created either in the default namespace or in the named namespace with the namespace option. And for Linux control plane, a very powerful feature in uh, VPP, uh, we will by default use Linux control plane interface IDs from the Linux side to sort of be more seamless with respect to uh, our pullers. Uh, but if uh, LCP is not uh, loaded at all, or there exists no interface uh, uh, pair for this thing, or we literally tell HSFlowD do not use them, uh, then we will use the VPP representation of the interface. If you're curious as to why this is a big topic, come see me later. So Act 3 is about performance. That's also the last thing that I'll talk about. I'm taking one of these 2012 uh, Dells that has like 88 CPUs or something. It's, it's not insanely expensive or powerful. It's just a run-of-the-mill thing. And then I turned on uh, a load test here with these pairs that I'll show port 0 is sending to port 1 and port 1 is sending to port 0. And they're doing IPv4 and MPLS with SFlow turned on. And then the layer 2 cross-connect, which is ostensibly cheaper, I guess. And then IPv4 and MPLS with SFlow turned off. And, and finally, a layer two cross connect also without S flow. Uh, and uh, kind of nice when you do 80 gigabits or 47 million packs per second, there's absolutely no difference in performance with S flow turned on or off. They're both doing 40 gigs of L1. They're both doing 23.6 million packs per second, except the left hand side with S flow turned on is also emitting one in 10,000 packets, which is easily 22, 23,000 packets per second that we're sampling. So I was curious to see like, what is actually the, the, the limit of this thing. So this table here shows, uh, first, if you take an interface, a 10 gigabit one with 64 byte packets, which is the smallest we're allowed to send, you'll get 14.88 million packets per second. And if I do that with IPv4 turned on, VPP does a lot more work, of course, and it'll do about 10.8, 10.9. And with MPLS turned on, it's 10.1. Right? That's just baseline. And then as soon as you turn on any sampling whatsoever, we insert this node in the graph, remember? And what it's doing is it's copying all the packets to the next node again, which takes 10 CPU cycles. So there's an immediate regression when you turn this thing on at all. So we go from 14.88 to about 14.3 million packets per second when it is turned on with a synthetically large sampling number, like one in one million or so. But then it's not actually too bad. If you ratchet it up and go to one to 10,000, one to 1,000, or even one to 100, which you, your vendor would not recommend you do on hardware most of the time. The further regression is not that bad, right? So for layer two cross-connect, we're going from 14.3 to 14.15 million packets per second while sampling one in 100 of them. And that's where we also see that we start dropping these samples uh, selectively and by choice in the data plane because we will be overloading the rest of the system. Uh, and so by design, we have this FIFO that is limited size, and when it gets over full, we just drop them from the tail. And that's what you see here in that last column, down below 1.8 million dropped samples. If you build a larger FIFO, you would get more throughput, I think. 
But it's really nice to see that this quad loop overhead that we saw before really is just in moving the packets around, which we can do in nine CPU cycles per, which is pretty, pretty great if you think about it, but it's still an overhead. And then I want to show some uh, interoperability slides. Uh, again, this, uh, maybe uh, how, how you might show this stuff on the other side. Inman has a tool called SFLOW-RT where you can just point SFLOW uh, agents at. Uh, and uh, here's a screenshot from that. Uh, we also have Aquarado. That's one of my personal favorites. Absolutely fabulous piece of software. Um, uh, but it could be that if uh, you're here, I would like to talk uh, to you about counter samples and EF names in, uh, in the Aquarado inlet. Uh, we can also use NTOP-NG with many thanks to Luca, who personally went and added the SFO collector to the open source version of this as we talked about this project. And you can see all that uh, graphics uh, really nicely line up in NTOP-NG as well. Uh, thanks to Vlad for this beautiful picture. Uh, these are like really big machines converting like two kilowatts of power into heat after they forwarded a terabit plus of traffic through the middle machine there on one VPP instance. Okay, thank you. Sorry, there is no time for questions, so we move to the next.